telling us he has no rival. This God is a mighty God. And this God he will be with you. Isaiah chapter 40. I see how God revealed himself unto the people. And he told them and reminded them. The idols of the land may be there, but they are wood or stone or silver or gold. But the God of heaven has no beginning, has no end. And his power has no comparison. Isaiah chapter 40, I'm reading from verse 18. To whom then will ye like him, God? Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? It's still reminding us of the very fact that God is so great, so mighty, and so powerful. And God is in heaven. He's so high, he's so majestic. There's no comparison with him. That's why he said, to whom then will ye like him, God? Or what, what likeness will ye compare unto him? The workman melted, the graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth each over with gold, and casteth silver chains. He that, are, that is so impoverished, so poor, that he has no oblation, chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Have ye, have ye not known, have ye not heard, as, as I... Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. That Jesus is talking about God now. He sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretch out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. That bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. It's not talking about the greatness of God, about the might of God. God is so great that the princes of this world, they're like nothing. The people of this world, they're like grasshopper in his sight. He tells us in verse, in verse 24, Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. And the wild wind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, says the Holy One. It's challenging us and telling us, reminding us that he is the incomparable God. No parallel, no equal, no rival. And then he tells us in verse 26, Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who has created these things, that bringeth out their hosts by number. And he calleth them all by name, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob? Why speakest, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, everlasting God, what kind of God? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faith. He will give you power. Yeah. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that do what? That's our strength. That is our strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run. They shall not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. That's talking about you. As you wait upon the Lord, it will empower you. It will energize you. Embolden you and strengthen you for the race before you in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 43, I'm reading from verse 11. Isaiah chapter 43. And we're reading from verse 11. It's still telling us that our God has no comparison. I, even I, I am the Lord. And beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have said. I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Listen to verse 13. Yea, 
before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. Listen to this. I will work and who shall let it. When God begins to work in your life, nobody will be able to hinder in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 6 and 7. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 6. It tells us here, it says, For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear thee, O King of nations? For to thee the seed appertain, for as much as among all the wise men of the nations, and in all their kingdoms, there is none like unto thee. This God is a special God. It's a great God. It's a unique God. It's an exalted, almighty God. Mark chapter 12. In Mark chapter 12, verse 32, still reminding us how great this God is. Still reminding us how mighty this God is. Still reminding us how incomparable to anyone, anything. This a great, mighty God is. Mark chapter 12, verse 32. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. We are, we are convinced beyond any shadow of doubt that this God, the God of heaven, the God of power, the God of glory, the God that is mighty, highly exalted, there is none like him. We come to point number three now, the infinite greatness of the Most High. The infinite greatness, his greatness is immeasurable, uncalculable. You cannot calculate or measure it or weigh it because it's so great and it is infinite. Here is what he eventually Nebuchadnezzar discovered. He now knew that this God is such a great God, the greatness is infinite. In Daniel chapter 3, I'm reading verse 26. Daniel chapter 3. We're looking at verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning furry furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of what kind of God? Tell me out loud. Most high God, if you were there that day, you said, Nebuchadnezzar, you have swallowed your saliva. You have eaten your words. Were well, you not the one that was saying, who is that God? Now you realize who that God is. Your enemies will realize who God is. The detractors will recognize who God is. Your persecutors, they will realize who this mighty, great God, who he is in Jesus' name. He says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither there. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth, came forth out of the midst of the fire. And now in verse 29, in verse 29, therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which shall speak, which, which speak, any sin amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a don't heal, because, because, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Daniel knew that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that. I know that. You know it too. That there is no other God. Which God can heal like our God. Which God can deliver like our God. Which God can work signs and wonders like our God. Which God can perform miracles like our God. Which other God can create the whole earth like our God. Which God can divide the Red Sea like our God. Which God can make millions of people to pass over through the river Jordan like our God. Which God can demolish and destroy the Jericho walls like our God. Which God can open the eyes of the blind like our God. Which God can make 
the lame to walk, like I got, which God can make a person or three people go through the fire and they're not burnt at all, like I got, which God can make you overcome all your troubles and challenges and difficulties, like I got. We want to emphasize once again, there is no God like our God. I said there's no God like our God. This God is mighty. He's a miracle worker. This God is the redeemer. is the deliverer. This God is so mighty. Whatever problem you have, whatever challenges you have, this God will deliver you. If you're sick, this God will heal you. If you're oppressed, this God will deliver you. If you have affliction, this God will set you free. If you're in any bondage, this God will, will make all the bondage, all the shackles to be totally broken out of your life in Jesus' name. If you have a mountain, this God will remove that mountain. Because there is no God. There is no God that can deliver, that can solve our problems like this God of heaven. Now, isn't it wonderful? This is coming out of the mouth of Nebuchadnezzar. No God, there is no other God that can deliver. After this God, look at chapter 4 of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 2. It says, I thought it good to show the signs and the wonders that the high God uh, is calling him again the high God. It's not the low God. It's not the earthly God. It's not the mundane God. It's not the idol God. It's the high God. The majestic and the exalted God. The high God has wrought toward me in verse 3. How great I signs. How mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And his dominion is from generation to generation. Chapter 4 verse 34. In verse 34, and at the end of the days, I Nebuchadnezzar lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I, and I, I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, and whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32, telling us how great and mighty our God is, and telling us there's no comparison, there's no rival with this mighty God. Jeremiah chapter 32, I'm reading verse 17, Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power, and stretch out arm. There is nothing too hard for thee. As you think about your life, as you think about the challenges you are facing today, as you think about your family, as you think about the needs in your life, you can say, Lord God, you have made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and by thy stretch out arm, and there is nothing, nothing, nothing too hard for thee. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, it says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? No, nothing too hard for him. Deuteronomy chapter 3. Deuteronomy chapter 3. We're reading from verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 3. And we're looking at verse 24. You'll see the greatness of God, the majesty of God, the power of the Almighty God. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 24. O Lord God, Thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand for what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy words or and according to thy might. No comparison, just to remind us again in uh, Psalm 47. Psalm 47, we're looking at verse 2. Psalm 47, reading from verse 2. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. There's no place you are in any corner of the world where the Lord cannot see you, where the Lord cannot help you, where the Lord cannot get you out of that trouble because we're told the Lord is the Most High. He's so terrible and so great and so wonderful. He is a great king over all the earth. In Psalm 92, I'm reading from verse 8. Psalm 92, we're looking at verse 8. 92 verse 8. For thou, Lord, art most high. How long? Forevermore. He is most high. He was the most high at the time of Nebuchadnezzar. 
It was the most high at, at the time of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And when Nebuchadnezzar had come, and then Belshazzar came, the Lord was still the most high. And when Belshazzar uh, went, and then Darius came, and the time of Daniel came to throw him into the lion's den, God, the God of heaven, the King of heaven, he was still the most high. And now at your own time, in your own place, with all the difficulties and the challenges you have, your God is still the most high. And he'll see you through every challenge, every difficulty in your life. In Jesus' name, thou, Lord, art the most high forevermore. We're looking at Job chapter 36. Job 36. We're looking at verse 26. Job 36. We're looking at it from, why don't you read from verse, uh, read from verse 22. Behold, God exalted by his power who teaches like him who has who has enjoyed him like at his way or who can say thou hast wrought iniquity remember that thou magnify his work which men behold every man may, that every man may see it man may behold it afar off now verse 26 behold god is great God is great, and we know him not. We don't know how great he is. You know, when we have a little problem, we panic, we fear, because we do not know how great our God is. But here we're told, behold, God is great, and we know him not. Neither can we number of, can, can the number of his years be searched out. Psalm 135, Psalm 135. What do you mean from verses 5 and 6? Psalm 1, 3, 5, verses 5 and 6. For I know that the Lord is great. Do you know it now? Yes. Looking at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego coming out of the fire. Do you know that God is great? Yes. Looking at Daniel coming out of the lion's den. Do you know that your God is great? Seeing the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, opening the eyes of the blind and making the limb to walk and raising the dead. Do you know that your God is great? Whenever you have a problem, whenever you come into a tight corner, and whenever the devil is trying to threaten you and trying to say, Where will you go? Because now I caught you. Always remember, your God will show up on that at that time. And you will recognize how great your God is. For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that he did in heaven, and in earth, and in the sea, and all deep places. Psalm 145, we're looking at verse 3. In Psalm 145, we're looking at verse 3. Great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised, his greatness is, is what? Of such a ball. It's so great, you cannot fathom it, you cannot know it, to the extreme end of it. You see how Nebuchadnezzar shouted, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. He recognized God as the Most High God. And then he said in chapter 4, I thought it good to show the signs and the wonders that the Most High God has wrought. And I bless the Most High. Nebuchadnezzar eventually recognized the God of heaven as the Most High. He, want, he at once acknowledged the true God to be the Most High above all. Can any mighty monarch, any mortal man claim greatness in the presence of the Almighty God, the Most High God, the Creator and the Possessor of heaven and earth? In fact, he tells us, all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. All nations, well, their kings and princes, are reputed as nothing. The greatness of men, in comparison with this almighty God, is less than nothing in his sight. The greatness of our God is not restricted to any location, or restricted, limited to any period of time. Number one, is great in power. Number two, is lofty in dominion. Number three, is eminent in wisdom. Number four, is, is elevated in glory. Number five, is universal in authority. Number six, is incomparable in sovereignty. Our God is no local deity, no, no, no petty ruler of a tribe. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. 
and he rules in infinite majesty.